Ever feel like your emotions are a roller coaster you can't control? Like you're always one bad moment away from a meltdown? You're not alone. Managing emotions is a battle we all face. In today's video, we'll share life-changing rules to master your emotions. Want to know how to turn anxiety into calmness and frustration into focus? How about transforming those heavy-hearted days into ones filled with clarity and confidence? Stick around, because we're about to unveil these secrets. Let's dive in. Number 10. Hold love lightly. Have you ever hugged someone so tight that they gasp for air? That's kind of like loving too hard. It's okay to love, but squeeze too tight and you might get hurt, especially if that hug isn't hugged back. Imagine your favorite mug. You enjoy your coffee more knowing it could break any day, right? That's the heart of it. Enjoy the love, but be ready to let go. Stoics were ancient thinkers who said life's like a wild party. You can have a blast, but remember, the door's always open, and you might have to step out any time. They told us to keep our cool, no matter what life throws at us. They had this neat saying, don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will. Then your life will flow as well. Number 9. Easy on the heart. Picture your heart like a sponge, soaking up feelings from folks around you. Now, empathy's a superpower, no doubt. It's like having a soft spot for others, feeling what they feel. But what if your heart sponge gets too heavy, dripping with everyone else's blues? You'd be weighed down, right? Here's the thing. Care about people, sure, but don't let their storms turn your sunny days gray. The Stoics had this sorted out. They believed in caring, but not so much that you lose yourself. They said, if you wish to be loved, love. But they also knew the importance of guarding your own vibe. A Stoic philosopher named Seneca once tossed us this gem. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. That's about not getting tangled in everyone's drama. Have a heart, lend an ear, but don't let it drag your spirit down. Number 8. Choose your crowd. Imagine you're the DJ of your life's party. Now some guests are grooving to your tunes, but some are spilling drinks and killing the vibe. What do you do? You don't let them turn your bash into a bummer. You kindly show them the door. That's what it's like to snip snappy folks out of your story. The Stoics were all about this. They were like life's bouncers, knowing who to let into the club of their minds. They'd say, it's not the load that breaks you down, it's the way you carry it. So if someone's making your mental backpack heavy, it's time to unpack that burden. They had a knack for putting themselves first in a cool way, caring for their peace like it was gold, because it is. Epictetus, a smart stoic, put it this way, he who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. By that, he means if you're cool with you, anyone who's not doesn't get a backstage pass to your show. Number 7. Quiet Confidence Think of a calm, deep ocean. That's your mind when you decide to zip it and not spill every little thought or feeling. There's strength in that silence. The Stoics, those ancient gurus of grit, got it. They dug inner peace like it was treasure and figured out that the less you chase after pats on the back, the more you feel like a boss inside. They tossed around wisdom like, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Good old Epictetus said that. It's about keeping your cards close to your chest. Because when you're not trying to get the world to nod along with you, you start to trust your own nods more. This isn't about bottling things up. It's about picking your moments like you pick your playlist. Only the good tracks. And when you do share, it's because you want to, not because you need someone's thumbs up to feel good. Number 6. Be your own VIP. Treat yourself like you're the main event, because you are. Before you're out there being a superhero to others, make sure your own cape is on straight. It's about locking down your happiness and charging your own batteries to full before you start sharing that energy. And when it comes to talking, think of it like sending a text message. You wouldn't add fluff you don't need, right? So say it like it is. Straight talk doesn't just cut through the noise. It makes everything crystal clear for everyone. Our Stoics were the originals when it comes to keeping it real with themselves. One of them, Chrysippus said, be your own best friend first. They knew that playing hide and seek with words just ends up in a wild goose chase. Number five, guard your gates. Life's like a 24-7 diner, always open. But hey, you're not the all-night chef. 
you've got to flip the sign to closed sometimes. Setting boundaries is like telling people, hold up, this is my space, my time. It's not selfish, it's smart self-care. The Stoics were onto this way before smartphones made us feel we've got to text back at 3 a.m. They were big on doing their own thing, building a little fort around their peace of mind. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic who ran the Roman Empire said, you have the power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you'll find strength. He's talking about calling the shots in your life, not letting every ding and ping do it for you. It's like this, you're the boss of your life's inbox. You decide what gets a reply and what can wait. When you're always on tap, you end up drained. But when you set those limits, you're telling the world, I'm in charge of my time. Your phone's do not disturb is there for a reason. Use it. Number four, hit pause, play wise. Got that knee jerk itch to react when things heat up? Try this, hit the brakes. Whether it's counting those slow 10 seconds, taking a deep breath or giving it a day, just wait before you leave. It's like your emotions are on a simmer and you don't want them boiling over and messing up the kitchen. The Stoics were champs at this game. They'd say emotions are like wild horses. They're great if you keep them in check, but let them run wild and you're in for a bumpy ride. A Stoic philosopher named Zeno would probably tell you, better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. And he's got a point. So when your feathers are ruffled, don't let your first squawk be your move. Take a step back, take a breath, and give it some space. Think of it like letting your words marinate. They'll taste so much better when you finally serve them. Number three, feel the vibes, know the tides. Ever notice how a storm gives a heads up before it breaks loose? A gust of wind here, a rumble of thunder there, you know what's coming. Your feelings are just like that. They show up in your body first. Maybe your heart races or your palms get sweaty. That's your signal to tune in. Getting to know these sneak peeks of your emotions is like being your own weather person. You start to see the pattern, the ebb and flow of your own moods and vibes. Maybe you'll grab a pen and spill it all in a journal or chat it out with someone who can help you make sense of the forecast. The Stoic crew had a way with this. They trained themselves to spot their feelings like distant ships on the horizon. Good old Seneca would say, the mind that is anxious about the future is miserable. He's nudging us to stay in the now, to feel it fully, to know it like the back of our hand. Number two, move your mood. Here's a secret. Your body can jazz up your brain. Lace up your sneakers and take your blues for a run or dance them out. When you get moving, your brain starts to party, throwing out endorphins like confetti. Those are the feel-good sparks. The Stoics, ancient folks who are all about the tough mind game, they knew the score. They weren't gym junkies, but they tell you a healthy mind is a healthy body. That was their MVP juvenile talking about the big league benefits of getting physical. When life's noise cranks up, turn it down with a sweat session. It's like taking your grumpy thoughts and tired feelings for a spin on the treadmill. By the time you're done, they're too worn out to bug you. Number one, mend your mind. Ever scraped a knee? You clean it, patch it up, and kiss it better. Now what about a scrape on your spirit, like a bruise from a bad day or a sting from harsh words? That's where you whip out your emotional first aid kit. It's packed with self-kindness, like the kind words you give a buddy who's feeling down. The Stoic sages were all about this inner healing. They'd probably say, be kind to all, but start with yourself. They knew that being your own friend was step one to bouncing back. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic all-star, might have said, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. He meant that you rise by healing, not hurting. So next time you face a flop or a no thanks, give yourself a mental band-aid. Look in the mirror and say, hey, you're learning and that's cool. It's about flipping the script, finding the lesson in the mess. Grab a notepad, jot down these tips and start trying them out. Your journey to emotional control begins with one small step. So why wait? Let's turn these words into action.